Und das bedeutet, dass wir soziale Kontakte weitestgehend einstellen, wo immer das möglich ist. What Angela Merkel was talking in this video about is uh, social distancing, the phenomenon that we do not go out into the public in order to reduce the spread of an infectious disease. And you probably heard this term a lot in media recently. And the question that some people are wondering is, how do we know that these measures are effective? Uh, in German news media, we heard that about 60 to 70 percent of the population will probably get infected over the course of the COVID-19 disease. And one of the questions is, where How do we know this? Where do we have this knowledge from? Um, but before I delve into this question, first a little disclaimer. Uh, I am not a physician. Um, I do not want to make any recommendations for your own individual actions or behavior. This video is the only purpose of this video is to give you insight into how um, modeling works and what the idea of modeling is. Of modeling is. Uh, Real models for disease are a lot more complex than uh, what I'm going to show you in this video. And um, this is a, a strong or a large oversimplification of how this actually works. Um, but this becomes immediately apparent if you look for simulation of epidemics on the internet. And if you Google this, you will probably find Uh, this article on on Wikipedia, Mathematical Modeling of Infectious Diseases, and there is a long list of ways of how um, science has tried to explain how infectious diseases spread in a population. One thing to make sure here is that um, on the one hand side we have um, Uh, empirical data, that is the case numbers that we've all been seeing. And on the other hand, we have theoretical knowledge where we try to understand how diseases spread, what are the implications of how we um, observe uh, these cases, is there maybe, are there um, unnoticed cases that are missing in the data. And one thing that tries to bring both theory and um, empirical data together is the approach of simulation or of modeling or in particular in this case agent-based modeling and the model that i want to show you today is a model that tries to explain uh, how social distancing can affect the spread of a disease and uh, it is a it's a gross simplification of how this spread of disease actually works the assumption is that we have Uh, a population, these are the green people in here, and there is this one person who is infected and he is in uh, his incubation period, so he's not yet aware of the fact that he's ill. And when we run the simulation, this person moves around, he becomes ill and he might infect other people. As soon as they become ill, they turn red. Red people no longer leave the house, they stay at home, but they might get visitors though who can get infected. and. Uh, if a person is infected, they can become severely infected, which is the purple color. And then these people move to the hospital where we assume that they're no longer infectious. Um, and after a certain period of time, they can either recover and become immune or they can um, um, not survive this illness and uh, will then be counted as dead cases in this, in this simulation. We have some assumptions in this model and all of these assumptions are bound to be wrong there it's um, in reality these um, these diseases behave a lot more complex than in such a simulation like this but the 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 numbers that i've taken here are from the who report from china so they assume that on each contact of two people the likelihood of getting an infection is between one and five percent in this in this case i chose five percent so whenever two people in this simulation meet they will have a dice thrown with a hundred sides and if we throw a one two three four or five then the other person will get infected otherwise they will not get infected people after infection stay in, infected for five days uh, and of course in reality this can be a range of uh, different days and then they will become ill after um, the illness duration after 14 days they can also become severely ill and then we will throw another dice in this case a uh, hundred sided dice and any number between one and 20 will make the person severely ill and all of the severe ill people will again stay ill for another 14 days and then we'll throw another dice and in this case 19 uh, percent of uh, the people will uh, not survive in the hospital and this should in theory 
um, from the formulas, we, this should lead to a death rate of 3.8%. So 3.8% of the population, if everyone gets infected, should not survive this scenario. Um, what we can also affect is the social distancing. So how much do people um, roam around? Are they mobile or will they stay at home? Uh, how many? How dense is the population? In this case, we've chosen 200 people in this community, and this is completely arbitrary. This is uh, these. This could represent thousands of people, or it could represent individual people. And we have a hospital capacity. And if we run the simulation again. Um, we will see that more people get infected, more people get ill, and now as soon as people get severely infected, the hospital capacity goes down. But in this configuration, it seems like the hospital never goes out of capacity, so all of the people who were treated uh, were able to get treated, even 5.5% were not um, uh, affected by the disease at all, but 7% did not survive. And what is important to know, a simulation uses randomness, as I've just explained, to try to understand how um, a disease might evolve. So we have to repeat this. We have to run the simulation again, and we have to run this several times in order to get an estimate of how large um, the effect of these individual variables is on the outcome. So if we run this again with 200 people and 15 people in the hospital, uh, 15 um, beds in the hospital, we will now see this will be about, I think, 6.5% did not survive in this case. And we can now increase the speed of the simulation so we can run, now in this case, only 4%. By pressing the S key in the simulation, you can reset it. And by pressing the R key, you can run the simulation again. I will put the link to a web based simulation uh, in the video below. Here, 3.5% survive uh, did not survive, and in another run, 2.5. So it strongly depends on randomness, of course, because there are many dices being thrown. But what we can immediately see is if we move the social distancing to a lower value, um, and people are more mobile, we will have a faster spread of the disease. More people will get ill very quickly and the uh, capacity of the hospital is um, down to zero much earlier than in the other simulation which should typically yield to a higher percentage of people not surviving the, the illness. The disease will be over quicker, we'll only have uh, 48 dis uh, days until everyone is either immune or dead, um, but more people will not survive. In this case 11.5% in another case, 8.5%, 12%. And of course, we can automate this and run this uh, the simulation in batches. If you're using the web-based tool, you cannot do this. But if you're downloading the NetLogo simulation environment and using um, the, the this model, you can use this uh, behavior space component in the tools menu, which will allow you to run several of these models in batches. Another aspect that we can have a look at is what is behavior change doing? So if we set up this simulation and people are relatively um, strongly interacting with one another, let's make this a little bit quicker. And we now see that, okay, we have a dramatic increase and we now redu reduce uh, social interactions. So even, even with the parameters that caused about 10% of the people to not survive this, um, in this version, uh, this doesn't look better either, so we still have about 8.5% of the people getting ill, but we have 11% not being affected because people start to uh, distance themselves more as soon as the outbreak uh, reaches a, th a certain threshold. What we can also see is if we change this back to 0.85 and increase the density, in, in this uh, virtual environment, that the disease will also spread much more quickly. Let's turn up the speed a little bit. And we see that this also increases the, the curve angle, the curve's angle, so to say, and we will also run out of hospital capacity. This is something where we can ha might have some leeway, we might make some more room in hospitals, but what is also quickly becoming apparent is that um, if you run this model several times that the hospital capacity 
um, is not the strongest lever for changing the effect, but the social distancing. If, if we run the model with 0.95 from the beginning, we will see that uh, it can even happen that the outbreak is completely contained even before people get ill and that uh, the, uh, this virus would not spread any longer as it happened with uh, the initial SARS or MERS. Again, a disclaimer, um, this model has some assumptions that are not true. Um, many of the these numbers are drawn from the WHO, but they, of course, are not as static as they are in reality. We don't have a fixed incubation time of five days. We don't have a fixed severity rate. There are other factors that play a role, such as uh, the age of the um, patients, the comorbidities that people have play a large role. All of this is not modeled in this uh, in this simulation and uh, another thing is that is completely ignored in this model is that social distancing itself does come with a cost as well so if if everyone stopped working especially if um, healthcare personnel stopped working um, then the hospital capacity would go down and this would also lead to um, more um, deaths in in the in the population but also if people do not go to work, then this will have uh, economic um, consequences and a part of economic consequences can be that there will be more people that will get unemployed, that might lose their jobs, that might lose their homes. And this also has risks for a health system. This will also cause people to lose um, healthy life years in the long term. So a strong recommendation is not to take this model as a uh, as a guide for action in your in your personal decision making because it uh, is definitely wrong um, and today is March the 15th and all the facts could be different tomorrow or next week so um, my recommendation is trust the experts um, and the idea of this video is only to give you an insight in how disease modeling can work in this very simplified case and if you are interested in how um, such models work uh, you can go to the internet look for agent-based modeling and i hope that this sparked some of your interest and uh thank you for watching this video we study the effectiveness of simulation models for science communication Therefore, I would be very happy if you were to follow this link, which is also in the video description below, and answer a short survey on this video. We are very happy to receive your feedback.